coming tonight. It's good to see you. Well, I can't see you, but uh, <laughs> it's good to have each one of you here uh, with us, and I hope that you'll listen very carefully. This is the 5G Christmas uh, play that they're doing. It's all going to be done by our young people of everything that will take place, uh, except for me, and I'm a young person. <laughs> but uh, giving, getting, grace, gratitude, and glory. 5G Christmas. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me now? Awesome. So ladies and gentlemen, the 5G revolution is here. 5G technology is the hottest new gift of the season. Perfect for every family member on your list. Now what is 5G? It's more than just phone service. No, 5G connects to everything. It's in the products we wear, like my shoes. Diane, how many steps have I taken today? You have taken 500 steps. Thank you, Diane. My pleasure. See, it's also in the products we buy, like bubble gum. You have two sticks of gum left. Would you like to order a new pack from Amazon? No thanks, Diane. Okay, I will remind you when you have one stick left. Amazing, right? But it's not just in that. It's also in the products we use, like our toothbrush. Diane, how long did I brush this morning? You brushed for 20 seconds. See what I mean? Thanks, Diane. You need to brush for two minutes. Well, I normally get pretty close to two minutes. Your average brush time is 18 and a half seconds. <laughs> okay, Diane, thank you. If you do not brush more, your teeth will fall out. Thank you, Diane. We're good. Thank you. For your toothbrush user settings, I have notified your mother. No, no, no. Diane, do not notify my mother. Diane, no, do not. You really need to take more steps, too. Diane. hundred is not much for this time of day. <laughs> Diane, cancel the call. You have an incoming call from Mommy. <laughs> Hello, Jay. This is your mother. Why aren't you brushing your teeth more? I try to tell him all the time. No one's blaming you, Diane. This is all on Jake. You have left the stage. Would you like me to turn off the stage lights? Jake, didn't I teach you to turn the lights off when you leave a room?
of all the blessings we have. And it's just the first G to having an amazing 5G Christmas. Tito? I'm sold. I can't wait to learn about the other four Gs. Whoa, whoa, hold up. Hold up. You have a grandparent named Tito? Luke 1, 26 through 49. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came upon her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled in his saying and cast her mind, cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a child, a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And, shall, and he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the, angel said, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of, the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, shall she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto uh, me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped into her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. 
And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord shall come for good to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped into my womb for joy, and blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Father, uh, my Savior, for he hath regarded the low state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. Mary was nervous about becoming the mother of Jesus, but her nervousness soon turned to joy. She was grateful that God was sending the promised Messiah, and she was grateful God had chosen her to be a part of that story.
The second G is grace. Grace. I mean, like, God is good. God is great. We thank him for our food. Or, as I like to do it, thank for me. Let's think. That kind of grace is important. But this grace is more about forgiveness. Ugh, I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? I hate forgiving. Someone does something wrong and I just forgive them. Tell them it's okay? No way. Oh, you have no idea how good it can feel to forgive someone. Of course it does. Last year when me and Abigail got into that big fight, I felt so much better when we finally made up and forgave each other. I hear you. My sister borrowed one of my favorite dresses without asking. She and her boyfriend got into a huge food fight in Burger King and got ketchup all over my dress. Your sister and her boyfriend got into a huge fight at Burger King? And you forgave her for ruining your dress? She's my sister. Of course I did. But she ruined your dress, and she didn't even ask to borrow it. Come on, guys. I had to forgive her. Christmas is a time when we remember Jesus, and Jesus came to save us from our sins. And if Jesus can forgive me for everything I've done, then we need to forgive so we can forgive others, don't we? Exactly. Hold on. I need more of them. Excuse me. Hello? Selena? It's Sarah. I'm sorry it took me so long to say this, but I forgive you for losing my super sparkly sequins crunchy. We still friends? Cool. See you again, Rachel. You feel better, don't you? Remember that possible. Side key Christmas isn't what I, what I expected. It's not? Nope. It's way better. Matthew 1, 18 through 24. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was of this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away for guilty. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to, t uh, to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his, na uh, his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. Joseph was upset when he heard that Mary was pregnant. So God sent an angel to tell him that Mary was telling the truth. Mary's child was the son of God, and Joseph showed grace when he married her and became the earthly father, father of Jesus. It is by grace we have been saved from our sins by Jesus. If we show grace to others, we can show them how much Jesus loves them too.
5G, what does it mean for you? It means more connectivity and more information. It means real-time connections with friends and loved ones and live sports training. It means staying connected with everyone wherever you go. Hey, Diane, did I turn all the lights off at home? Yes, you did. Thanks, Diane. You just turned the lights back on. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You just walked in the back door and turned on the lights. Diane, I'm not at home. You're not? That's funny. Someone is home. Diane, I live by myself. Someone is taking your television and laptop computer. What? They are taking your coffee maker, which is still half full. Diane, do something. Okay, I will replace everything they are stealing on Amazon. Diane, I am broke. Do not do that. Ordering one television, one laptop computer, one coffee maker. Diane, stop. Ordering a new 5G blender, microwave, and toothbrush. They took my toothbrush? I would. Do you know how expensive it's going to be to replace? Diane, can you please do something useful? Sending your latest toothbrush statistics to your mother. Call the police! I can't. Why not? I have an incoming call from mommy. I can. 
That's because you've never had our Uncle Paul's famous cauliflower and goat cheese. Cauliflower and goat cheese? To be fair, you got the recipe from Bobby Flam's Bay Show. We mix it every year and everyone loves it. It's not allowed in the house without it. I mean, sure, I was seven years old before I tried this next year's goat cheese. It's actually really very good. It's more than good, it's glorious. Funny you should say that. Because the third G is actually Go cheese Glory. As in glorious go cheese? As in glory to God in the highest. Come on, kids, what's Christmas? Christmas is the time, the celebration of the birth of Jesus when the angels sing glory. Exactly. God promised to send us his son, and he did. Jesus has come to save the world. We do sing a lot of glory in church for Christmas. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm sure that goat cheese gratin is pretty glorious, but at Christmas time, all the glory goes to God. Luke 2, 1 through 20. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came, up upon, came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born in this day a city of David, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Then suddenly there was with the, uh, the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child, and all that they, and all that and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they heard and seen, as it was told unto them. The angels were the first to glorify God, but they would not be the last. The shepherds sang glory, Mary sang glory, Simon and Anna sang glory when Jesus was brought to the temple, and the wise men sang glory. Let us never let a Christmas go by that we do not sing glory to, the, to God for sending us a Savior.
Well, guys, we've talked about three of the five Gs, gratitude, grace, and glory. The next two Gs go together. I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's not go teeth and grind. Well, as Gloria said, you made it sound, no, it is not. So what are they? Well, one of them is giving, and the other one is getting. Wow, we could have guessed that one. I mean, it's so obvious. Here we are to get our parents 5G. And it's a commercial. Ah, but in the five Gs of Christmas, giving and getting means more than just picking up a few phones for the family. I want to get us that one, too. Together on this one. What's the one thing God gives us for Christmas? Jesus. And what's the one thing God wants us to get? Is Jesus. What's the one thing God wants us to get is the love of Jesus. So that other people can get Jesus for themselves. You got it. That's so cool. It's almost like all the giving and getting we do at Christmas is to remind us of the gift of Jesus. That's exactly why we give and get at Christmas time. And as much fun it is, as it is getting 5G phones, a 5G tablet, or a brand new fishing pole. Fishing pole? Who said anything about a fishing pole? You have your wish list, I have mine. I don't know. Is the fishing pole 5G? Not the one I want. But as much as I want it, and as much as I hope I get it, it isn't as near as wonderful as the gift of Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a gov governor, and that, there, that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily uh, called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary and his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country and other ways. God gave the first gift, the baby Jesus, our Savior. The Magi brought gifts fit for a king. Every gift we give should remind us of what God has freely given to us. Every gift we receive should remind us that the one gift we need more than any other is the child in the manger.
came here with a suspense, but I feel like we found something way better. Yeah, it's all the real five cheese for Christmas. Gratitude, grace, corn, giving me a yay. Thanks, Nancy, for everything. It's my pleasure, but you can give your gratitude and glory to God. He's the real reason we have the 5Gs. Hey guys, I'm Jake. Can I tell you about the 5G revolution? That's okay, Jake. We were just talking to Nancy. She told us everything all about gratitude, grace, glory, giving, and getting. Nancy? Where's Nancy? Hey, where'd she go? Who was that? You mean she doesn't work here? No, this is my store. What was she talking about? She knows everything about the 5Gs. Gratitude, grace, glory, giving, and getting. Really? That's what those stand for? Jake, 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 Jake. Why we step into your office, we just so we just so confused. We'll tell you all about five Gs. Sounds like a deal. Diane? Diane here. How can I help? Could you play a Diane song? here. How Thanks, Diane. <laughs> Will you play one more Christmas song before we go? Can I help? Are you sure you don't want me to send your toothbrushing update to your mother? I'm sure. Just play the song. Okay. Sing along, everyone. Won't you? chapter 7 and verse 14. It's prophecy concerning the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the prophet Isaiah wrote, says, The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And we've studied a whole lot about the, this in, in the past. I'm sure you've heard quite a bit. Emmanuel means God with us. And certainly his birth uh, is prophesied as being coming from a young lady that is a virgin. Well, that, some people say, is impossible. How could that possibly happen? But certainly that's exactly what God did. It's all according to the plan that he had. In his plan, we're told in Revelation 13, 8, that speaks of the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. You know, that means that before God ever created the heaven and the earth, before God ever created uh, mankind, Adam and Eve, before he ever did any of that, he knew that Adam and Eve would sin. 
He knew that we as human beings would have a sin problem. And because of that, he had a plan. And that plan was that the Lamb of God, his son that would be born, would be able to would be able to to come into this world and take our sin away. He would be slain. He would have to die for the wages of sin is death. And so there would be judgment for sin. But God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son who was born into this world. And he came in by a virgin birth, as I'll explain the importance of that in a moment. But he did so, so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, not have to have that death uh, of judgment uh, in hell, but could have everlasting life with God in heaven. That's what he did according to Revelation 13, 8. Uh, he is also the Savior that would bruise the serpent's head. We're told that is the first prophecy in Scripture given in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And as that prophecy would, and he did so at the cross, uh, it also went on to say that, that he would come from the seed of the woman. Now, I said I would explain about that virgin birth and the importance of it. And here you go. You know that every one of us are sinners when we're born. The reason we're sinners when we're born, we have an earthly father. And a sin nature is passed down by the father. Isn't that great for us dads? <laughs> That's what the scripture says. Even though Eve sinned before Adam, Adam joined in that sin, but the God holds Adam responsible, and he said by man, by one man, sin came into the world, and death because of sin. And so death passed upon all people. So we all are born under that judgment of sin because there is a penalty, and that Jesus Christ came from the seed of the woman, a virgin-born conception, because Jesus needed to be born without a human father. Without a human father, Jesus did not have a sin nature. Neither did he choose to sin, and therefore he became the sinless substitute that could die in our place. And so Jesus Christ, that was all part of God's plan, is that he would be virgin born. Uh, God even controlled the, the Caesar, the emperor of Rome, uh, to decree that a taxation, a census would be taken. And it would cause Joseph to have to, to leave from Nazareth and come back to Bethlehem because that's where his lineage was from, traced back to King David. And he came back with Mary, his espouse wife, being greatly due a child. And therefore, God controlled to bring them back to be born in Bethlehem. That's what he had prophesied of where the Messiah would be born. God is in control of everything. He is omniscient, means he knows everything. And he is omnip uh, omnipotent, means he has all power. Therefore, he has the power, he has the knowledge to know exactly what needs to be done and the power to be able to accomplish it. There's nothing beyond his wise control. That means to me, and I believe it means to each one of us, that there's never an obstacle that comes into our life that is an obstacle to God. Nothing is an obstacle to him. He can do anything that he wills. And so when your faith is challenged, when you face a difficulty in your life, you may not understand the whys of what's going on, but you can understand this, that God is in control. And when we face these difficulties, uh, we're challenged and sometimes thinks, hey, 
There's no way, there's no answer for my situation apart from a miracle. But remember, our God is a God of miracles. Amen. And he is the one that brought the Lord Jesus Christ into this world in such a way that he could accomplish the forgiveness, the removal of our sins completely in this world. We thank the Lord for that. So even at this time of year, when we think of Jesus Christ and his birth, we're reminded that uh, what God can do and wants to do in each one of our lives. You can fully trust God even when the circumstances seem to be impossible, even when it takes a miracle. Jesus Christ died for us. What a great blessing. Born to die, all part of God's plan. Now we're going to hear again as soon as they're ready in this next little chapter as it finishes up for our night. Guys, I still can't believe she had a grandparent named Teton. Are you seriously still on that? Just get over it! Yeesh.
And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him unto the throne of David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And in his kingdom there will be no end. Didn't they do a wonderful job? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Our young people they worked very hard on this, and of course they had some help in training and, and practicing, and we appreciate every one of our leaders uh, that worked in this as well, and I, if I start naming them, I'm going to miss somebody, so they'll stand out here. Come on out here, uh, leaders and young people, stand up on stage here for us, everybody. I'm here. <laughs> Tiffany has, has done a wonderful job from the beginning and, and kind of orchestrated the, the whole thing. And then Jennifer has done a lot as well. Where is Jennifer? Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and Laura, of course, has is, is helped out. Who else am I missing? All right. Dylan stepped in at the last moment here. For Evan, that is sick and uh, did a wonderful job there, except for brushing his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> we'll forgive him. And uh, as long as he uses that last piece of gum. <clears throat> but we're glad that you had a good time here tonight. And I hope you take the message of Christmas home with you. Uh, it is a time for us to celebrate. I know that there's a lot about giving gifts and receiving gifts and we all have fun and enjoy that, but it's all because of the greatest gift that's ever been given. And I hope that you have the confidence that you have received that gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if not, we would love to talk to you about it before you leave tonight. Thank you for being here with us. Let's be dismissed in prayer. Lord, we do thank you for the great job that has been done tonight and Lord, our hearts have been blessed, and we thank you for what you've accomplished. And I pray that as that we go through the remainder of this week, looking forward to this coming Saturday and the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ that we celebrate on that day, that all of these things would be in remembrance of what he has done, what you have done for us. And Father, I pray that it will be a great celebration of his birth. And we thank you for all that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.